Yes. Okay, we'll call the April 13th, 2023 workshop meeting to order. Stand for the pledge of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice. I'm going to ask for uh, acceptance of the agenda. Town of Rochester Town Board accepts the agenda as prepared by the town supervisor. There are four additions we're going to add. We're going to try to get to them before the interviews. If not, we'll finish up after the interview. Thank you. Roll call. Thank Councilman you. Coleman. Here. Councilman Anawan. Here. Councilman Paddocks is absent. Councilwoman Stasis. Here. Supervisor. Here. Okay. The Town of Rochester Town Board accepts the agenda as prepared by the Town Supervisor with the addition of discussion of the following items. Uh, a request from the Town, town Hall employees, uh, a request from the Association of Towns for a letter of support for a position that they're taking. Um, a uh, discussion at the request of Open Space Institute on uh, O and W Rail Trail kiosk, and a uh, discussion on the town email system. So those four additions. Do I have that motion? I have that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda. Vote. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Trying to get to the other thing again. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Uh, next, the grant application. I have a draft of it for you here. And there's a page that I will need to include in it that I neglected to include. How do you want to follow along? I didn't print one for you because I knew he would not be here. So, um, so I followed the format of the grant application as was. Uh, so I filled out the application to the best that I thought. If you guys, you can walk through it. If you want to propose any changes in wording. Then after the application, there's a placeholder in there for a copy of our resolution from tonight, authorizing the uh, application of it. And we also will be adding a resolution on Seeker for that, that I emailed to all of you. Um, did you print that resolution yeah. out? Um, and those two will be inserted in that placeholder page. Then next is uh, an aerial view of our park with a showing the approximate location of the bathrooms, the pavilion location, and the sign location. Then the uh, project timeline. Bear in mind this is our project timeline because the county contract being signed by September 23, 2023 is our hope, but. Uh, based on the way the ARPA funding went for water and sewer, it took almost nine months for them to get contract signed. So 
This is our pending them getting us signed contracts. Um, there is a brief description of the budget, but they also have this Excel template, which is the additional page that I handed out, which explains it a little more in detail. So we will be asking for $276,000, um, 100,000, we'll be asking for 100 project costs will be 276,000. We will be funding approximately 151,000 in cash and 25,000 in in-kind. That is the maximum you can do in-kind is 25% of, of the ask. So we can only do 25,000. Um, and that would be for use of the highway department to uh, do some of the work in, in uh, the septic area. So then I've uh, included the quotes that we got from the vendors. Bear in mind, they are quotes. Uh, none of these, we would have to go out to uh, bid process with the exception of the engineer, that being a skill. We could go out to bids or we could just go with uh, Peak, who did the quote for us. I also then provided some examples that M&T Advanced Construction Solutions provided us. Uh, being careful to say these are design possibilities. We do not have a design at this time for a, these are just some, th these units are prefab units that you can purchase and build on site. Uh, they assure me that they can build similar, much less expensively than the prefab, but uh, they provided these prefab units as a, an example of what it could look like. So that is the grant application. Um, Why don't we do the seeker resolution first, and then we can discuss the uh, application to see if you want to change anything. So the resolution for the seeker is Town of Rochester Town Board has determined the application made to the Ulster County Legislature for consideration of a municipal parks and recreation grant in the amount of $100,000 funding for capital project for construction of restroom facilities construction of septic and water system for same, replacement of the pavilion roof and replacement of park signage of the town of Rochester Park, located at 50 Scenic Road, Eckwood, New York, will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment and should be classified as a type two action under the following six NYCRR part 617 criteria, no further seeker review is required. C2 is for the replacement, rehabilitation, or reconstruction of a structure facility. Uh, that would be the pavilion roof and the sign. C9 is construction or expansion of a primary or accessory appurtenant non-residential structure or facility involving less than 4,000 square feet of gross floor area, and not involving a change in zoning or use variance and consistent with local land use controls, but not radio communication or microwave transmissions. That would be the bathroom. Bathroom would be less than 4,000 square feet. So I believe that both because of these two actions that we can classify this as I see Mary Lou nodding. So great. Um, so I'm asked to make that resolution. You're going to make it? No, I'm so well, I'll make it. Okay. Do you have a second? Uh, Kate, is there a roll call vote? Councilman Coleman? Aye. Councilman and Allen? Aye. Councilman Paddock? Absent. Okay, next. So on the grant itself, um, in the application process, does anybody have any thoughts, concerns, changes that you believe we should make? If not, um, only thing we could do is be a little bit stronger in the description. Okay. And say, when we say that it's going to be available to rail trail users, we can say something like, be available to rail code users and be a resource for all the county residents. Or okay. Just to highlight that. It's yeah, I, I purposely didn't want to overemphasize the rail trail because there was a little pushback originally on the from the legislature when this was first put together by them because there's a lot of money being funded for trails and they wanted to really make this be about parks and not trails. So I only mention it because of the proximity to yeah. the rail trail, but I didn't want to 
emphasize the trail too much because there is some feeling that there's too okay. much money being dedicated toward trails. But, but the Ulster County residence yeah. part, absolutely. Okay. Which one is that, Michael? Okay. I'm happy to uh, add something in there about that. Um, the the order of how I put things together, does that seem to make sense to people? It seemed to make the most sense to me mm -hmm. that we did the application and then the enabling resolution of seeker, then the overview picture, then the mm -hmm. timeline, then the existing pictures, and then the big quote. The other, the other thing in 22 is, I know we say that it's ADA compliant, but stressing the, the lack of an ADA compliant bathroom just makes it less accessible. Makes the park less accessible. Park less yeah. accessible. Yeah. From a health and safety perspective. Yeah. I think that's a great point. <clears throat> so I'm just going to emphasize health and safety. Okay, do you have any estimate of the number of users a week? Is that part of it? I don't know how to do yeah, that. I mean, literally, you probably have to sit and just watch. Yeah. How often do they clean the How often? Well, I'm not thinking about that. I'm just thinking about the summer. The garbage, but from the moment I get there, someone's either in the pickleball or on the rail trail, yeah, and all day long that stuff going on. What I want to emphasize is that there's a lot of yeah. rentals. Like, like, every, every weekend, every weekend, pretty much from um, starting next weekend. Yeah, we book every weekend. Through so December. we say, can we say April 15th to Labor Day? Yeah. Or actually, even into October? Yeah, it, as long as the weather's nice, mm -hmm. it books up. I was going to say April to October, rented every weekend. Yeah. And maybe also, I know you put community events, but I emphasize the holiday and veteran events there. Yep. No problem. Okay. Um, with those ads, are you guys comfortable then with the Town of Rochester Town Board authorizes the supervisor to apply to the Ulster County Legislature? For consideration of a municipal parks and recreation grant, the amount of $100,000 funding. For capital project for construction of restroom facilities, construction of septic and water system for same. Replacement of pavilion roof and replacement of park signage for the town of Rochester Park, located at 50 Scenic Road, Ackport, New York. Town estimates construction costs of, actually, that should just say 276000 The sign was a ballpark. Um, for the total project, the town further pledges to contribute up to $176,000 in matching funding for the project of all which no greater than, and it should say $25,000 shall be in for any kind services. So I'll make that motion as, as amended. As amended, yeah. I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Thank you very much. We'll get that out to them tomorrow, and hopefully we will get it in the um, Moving on to the greenery uh, project. Um, we received communication, and I emailed this to you all. From Shippo. Oh, wait, one of those gave somebody the first page of the one that starts out with it ends with the number two at the bottom. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was two pages. This one ends with the two. Okay. Okay, can you give me one of your lectures and I'll take them on back? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was too make up one set. I was too make up one set. Okay. And then we can draft seeker.
So you'll remember we reviewed the uh, seeker. I'd like to go through the part two again, just to make sure that we're all in agreement on it. We now have the answers uh, here in our possession regarding uh, the historic and the archeology, span which was the section that we skipped over the day we did the draft. Um, so for number one, impact on land, we checked yes. Is everybody in agreement on that? We checked small, no or small impact for everything. Um, impact on geological features, that's a no. And just so you know what we're doing is we're not adopting a, a neg deck or pause deck until after the public hearing, but what I would like to do is circulate this draft part two in draft format to all the agencies along with all the information to give them one more final chance to issue any comments before we do anything. So the, the impacts on surface water, we check no. <laughs> the impacts on groundwater, we check yes, and we put small or no impact for everything. Uh, the impact on flooding, we checked as no. The impact on air was checked as no. The impact on plants and animals was checked as yes, and we said no or small impact on everything. The impact on agricultural resources was no. The impact on aesthetic resources was a yes, and we checked no or small impact on everything. Uh, the impact on historic and archeological resources, I checked yes, based on the fact that it's in the uh, state uh, national register historic district. But we did get back the letters from SHPO that there's no impacts on archeology span or the district. So I've checked no or small impact on every category there. Um, Bear in mind letter E is not completed because we didn't say yes, or we didn't say moderate to large on any of them. So that's why that is left blank. Um, 11, the impact on open space and recreation, we checked no. 12, impact on critical environmental area, we checked no. 13, impact on transportation, we checked yes, and put small or moderate, or excuse me, no or small for each one. In other impacts, we did put addition of crosswalks and stop signs as mitigation because they're proposing that. Uh, impact on energy is yes, with a no or small impact on each category. Impact on noise, odor, and light was also a yes, with a no or small impact. Impact on human health was a no. Consistency with community plans was a no, meaning it's not, the question is it's not consistent. Uh, so it's not inconsistent, which is why it's a no. And consistency with community character, we checked a no as it's not inconsistent. Um, so with that being said, what I would like to do is have us adopt a resolution that I'm gonna share with you here. So I'm asking for a resolution to authorize the supervisor to to uh, send this notice of seeker lead agency review and completed application comment period. So I'm sending this to all the involved agencies and asking them, uh, notifying them that we have uh, 
completed our review. We believe and that we are, we have scheduled, we'll be, hopefully we'll be scheduling a public hearing for May 4th, 2023. And that we ask them to provide us any additional information and by no later than May 5th, and that we anticipate to complete the secret process on May 11th. So that would be a week after our public hearing. That would be at our workshop. Um, so I'm asking the resolution is to uh, authorize the supervisor to send the notice of seeker lead agency review and complete application comment period letter. Should it be draft application comment period at the top? Since it's just a draft, it's not. No, it's no, still an application. The, e the, e oh, e the EO oh, is okay. not draft, the, the document is secure. Um, I'll make that motion. Okay, second. I'll second. Any discussion? Um, part of the reason I'm doing this is, is the applicant's attorney uh, made me aware of a, a court case with type one actions that say, even though secret does not require a public hearing and you can do a negative declaration prior to the public hearing, he would prefer we wait until after our public hearing. Uh, it's a court case that he was cited to me and Mary Lou concurs that we should not complete our declaration. I mean, we, we believe now by doing this part two that we have all the information we need, but I would rather us have our public hearing and see if any additional public, give all the involved agencies one more opportunity to comment. Okay. And uh, just sort of dot our eyes across our case. So I have a motion in a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I, I think that's kind of sort of a seeker um, vote. So maybe you should just to be sure do a roll call. No problem. Happy to do that. Councilman. Aye. Councilman Anawan? Aye. Councilman Paddock is absent. Councilman Spisa? Aye. Aye. Good point. Um, next, I'm asking for a public hearing date. I have drafted a copy of the local law, which would provide the EEO. It is short and sweet and to the point. We have the public hearing. Um, the um, yep. moratorium. Yep, it says immediately following. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Yep. At least I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> there go. So uh, the resolution is the Town of Rochester Town Board sets the date of Thursday, May 4th, 2023 for public hearing to be convened following the completion of the public hearing for local law blank 2023 being convened at 6.30 p.m. at the Herald Lipton Community Center, 15 Tobacco Road, Accord, New York. Public hearing is convened on the matter of requests by, let's say, not a Accord, by Accord LLC, for consideration for inclusion of five parcels in the Economic Enterprise Overlay Zoning District pursuant to Town of Rochester Code 140-18.1. The parcels are identified as SBL 77.9-1-25, 27, 28, 29, and 31, located at 2 Towpath Road, 4 Towpath Road, 8 Towpath Road, and Granite Road, and are located in the Hamlet, Hamlet. Zoning District, the Town Board further requests the Town Court circulate legal notice of the public hearing. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. And this is the draft local law. So, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next, referral to the Ulster County Planning Board and Town of Rochester Planning Board. Town of Rochester Town Board. Authorize the town supervisor and the town clerk to initiate referral of the record of all documents placed into consideration in the matter, in the review of the matter of request by yeah, I, Accord LLC for consideration of inclusion of five parcels in the economic enterprise. Did I spell? I did spell enterprise wrong. Be an S. I like <laughs> Overlay Zoning District, pursuant to Town of Rochester Code 140 18.1. Okay. 
I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. Quick discussion. Did each of you get the invite to the Google shared folder that I set up? Yeah. Yes. Were you able to get in and get the files? I looked at it on my phone. I can check now. Okay. <laughs> I put sauce. Take got in. So. <laughs> Mary Lou got in. I didn't know if it was a virus. I know. I understand. Yeah, we don't want to stand. Yep. I understand. Anyway, uh, all do I make a motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Please look at that. That has every file that we've received for this application in there. So that is the information for you. I'm in. You want to download it? Do you want to just work out of it? I think it said granary EE. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask that we, we table the AED portion because we don't need Mary Lou to talk about that. We can talk about that later. Um, I would like to talk next about the Association of Towns request. Okay. Um, the Association of Towns sent an, an email that came out today, and they're requesting, the state has not completed their budget yet. They are requesting that we send letters of support, or actually not necessarily support, but that we reach out to our local Senate and Assembly, urging them to fight for an incentive-based approach to affordable housing in the final budget. Um, I don't know how carefully you have been following it, but the governor has put in her budget process policies, and, and they are allowed to do this within their budget. So when the budget is adopted, policies are also adopted, or sometimes regulations that mandate how communities deal with affordable housing. Um, I'm not saying the concept of dealing with affordable housing is bad. I'm just saying they're doing a one size fits all for every community in the state. The Association of Towns and the Association of Villages and probably the Association of Counties, although I can't speak for sure on that one, have come out opposed to this idea because it's a very penalty driven type of system for the communities. It is not particularly, uh, I'm trying to think of the best word, formative, you know, in that the community can work within their own means of how to do this. Um, the, last year in the budget, there were a number of these things put in as well. They were removed at the last minute. Um, it is one of the major sticking points of the budget negotiations going on between the governor and the uh, assembly and the Senate right now. Uh, so Association of Towns is asking. So what I'm asking is if the board would like me to send a letter uh, honoring their request, or if we don't want to, I'm fine with that either way. And I apologize that it's last minute. And you can see by the header, it came in at 10 o'clock. I mean, I principally, you guys have, you want to talk? You can see first. Well, you got the footing one, Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We, we would like to hear what you have to say. I think principally, you know, I'm an advocate for the concepts of home rule and local governance of affairs, and I agree if they want to support affordable housing, it's better to do it with incentives than to be punitive about it. Um, I'd want to see before we like send a letter. I trust Sarah, obviously. Um, I like the Association of Towns. I'd like to see what the exact language is, but I I would not want the state dictating how the town is supposed to approach affordable housing. We're clearly taking steps to do that. We should be allowed to do that according to what fits the community character. Um, I agree with Michael. I want to look at the language. Like, as far as looking at the language sure. first. Um, I mean, I think there needs to be a responsibility for towns to actually take on the housing prices and accountability for them. So I don't know that I would necessarily oppose penalties to towns that aren't taking it on, depending on the language in it. So 
I'm yeah. going to read through it first before I make a decision on it. Well, there, there, the, the, it is all out there publicly, so feel free to Google the budget yeah. and search for the governor's message, which is included. That may not be that terminology, but. I personally think they need to be more creative in the way they want to exert their power. And I don't, in general, as a philosophic ideal, I I think incentives in zoning over mandates are usually the thing that is the most useful. Um, it would be great if we got more budgetary funding for this issue, um, if they really want us to address it. But I also don't know what the benchmarks are or anything like that. So um, just generally, I don't support mandates like this, but I do support affordable housing. Um, but I just, I think that my fear would be, we don't want to allow something that would be totally inappropriate in our community. We'd want to be able to have say, um, if the state wanted to give us a million dollars to address the issue, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. What I could offer is if, if, you know, I will supply the, the name and email addresses of the offices and if each of, each of you wants to send your own letter and then we're not sending one as a body, I'm okay with that because I understand that this was an 11th hour thing. Uh, for all we know, they could adopt the budget at midnight tonight. You know, they are now 14 days or 13 days past the due date. Um, but the, the last I've heard in, in following and reading and, and I've been following it very carefully because some of our funding is tied to that budget. So yeah. um, they are at an impasse that is not going away. And it's over the housing and it's over the mm -hmm. And there are the two issues yeah. that they can't get past those to even deal with the other more smaller items. So maybe a long time before we see it. I mean, I don't mind writing. Okay. And I'm fine with that. I, I just want, you know, they don't ask us for much and, and you know, we use their service associates down a lot. They're, it's a really valuable asset, so. I mean, I don't, I think maybe we can check in about it on Saturday. Cause like, yeah. I wouldn't be opposed to us sending. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to sending We can't home. discuss it on Saturday because we advertise it only. Oh, only okay. All right. But I can send out a draft. And, you're advertised as a special meeting. We advertised as a special meeting, and we purposely only did it for zoning, so the supervisor didn't sneak something else in there. Okay, but you're still allowed to sneak something else in there. If something comes okay. up, you're allowed to discuss okay, it. Okay, because we said to discuss the topic of subdivision and zoning. Yeah, you can add something else. Why? Here we go. Well, it's also That's what the most current case law is. It is related that. to zoning. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Lou. Okay, You're so welcome. you know Saturday. Do you re do some research yeah. and let me know. We can write a letter about how we're trying to change our young standards. There you go. Now, just if I can just make one comment, I was in um a committee. I'm on on the New York State Bar Association. We had a meeting today, and this is one of the things that came up. And you know, it was um, municipal attorneys for cities, towns, villages, all across the state. And one of the concerns was that what's in the budget is kind of cookie cutter for everybody. And what you need in Westchester is not what you need in the North Country. Or here or Central or Western. It's different everywhere. I'm done. Run in. Um, and then Mary Lou. Apparently, but I'll give, oh no. Mary Lou, if you can sort of weigh in on this. So OSI uh, is getting ready to go out to bids on the rail trail project. Um, I, the first ask, they provided me a list of names and addresses for the residents of all the homes adjacent. Those letters went out uh, Friday, I believe, to all the residents, notifying them and just, informing them that if they had any little bridges or any sort of access that they had built on their own property, or not, excuse me, not on their own property, but on rail trail property, that they would 
uh, they're being requested to remove them. And if they don't, we, we will have to remove them while we're working. We will do our best to care for them and move them onto their property. We're not trying to destroy them, but we want to just make them aware. Um, <clears throat> the second question that's come up, and Mary Lou, I asked Mary Lou to do a little bit of research on this. I wasn't going to bring it up, um, but I think we should. So the beginning of the rail trail, if any of you, you'll probably remember there's a fence that is there separating the property, it's a privacy fence. The history of that is that was put up, we found it in minutes, it was approved by the town board to be put up 2002 or three. And it stemmed from a agreement that was made back in 1999 when the neighbors who lived there gave a piece of property to the town. And in return, Mary Lou and Kate and I, based on our memories, think that it was a time when the rail trail was sort of first being built. I know for a fact that for a while they tried landscaping, they tried trees mm -hmm. as, a, as a buffer between the house, okay. trees all died. They, so they came back to the town board in 2003 and put that fence up. There was an agreement it was supposed to be maintained. It was never um, The neighbor is very concerned about it. Uh, continuing, OSI is proposing a barrier, but not a, a visual barrier. They're proposing like a three, what they norm, you normally use along their rail trails, which is like a, uh, a post and rail fence. Split rail? There. Yeah. Like a three level, but clearly that's not in that's stopping somebody from walking there, but it's not it's not a barrier for visual. In order to do what they're proposing, it's it's probably three hundred feet, and it's cost of twenty five thousand dollars, probably uh, is what the OSI or twenty two five we're estimating. And uh, quite frankly, they don't have that. Kind of what I talked to them about doing is they're going to put out the bid with the, with the split rail fence and ask for an alternative bid for this type of fence. And so anybody who bids on the project, they're going to put in a bid for the split rail fence, which is on the plans, but they'll provide this, this information as an alternative bid to replace it. They'll get some numbers. We can, we don't have to decide tonight. I just want to put this on your radar. Mary Lou is continuing to do some research as to what, what or if we have any obligation to create a privacy fence. And then I also want us to sort of brainstorm and think of alternative ways we can do it because I don't think and we want to spend this kind of money. So go ahead, Mary Lou. Uh, I'll just mention that I, I did the research that I, I can do. Um, I believe there was some kind of agreement, at, and this is like a best of my recollection thing, that it was for planting for privacy. I don't know if they were to do it and maintain it, or if we were to do it and maintain it. I just don't remember, and I don't have files from back then. Actually, I had, uh, from that point, my files were stored at Town Hall after a certain point in 2000 or before in 2003 um or at wherever i i uh harold had taken those for me for storage so there may be a something at town hall somewhere um that has that agreement i was at a different firm at the time so i don't have a copy of the agreement as to the privacy and that was separate and apart from the the deed that was granted to us um, I don't recall it being for that long. Is, is that the length of the fence now, Mike, the 300 something feet, or is that what they've It's added? actually, currently it's almost 400 feet. Okay, all right. So, I, and I don't know if we put it up or they put it up. Um, well, the, I called- The agreement in the resolution was that they they put it up and they would maintain it. Okay, that, that's in the resolution and that, you know, then I'm sure that's what the agreement said. Yeah. So I don't think we have an obligation to do that. I don't know if they saw the agreement. I got in touch with their attorney at the time to see if he happened to have a copy. And he said, 
Nope, he keeps his files for 20 years. So four years ago, he he purged that one. So he doesn't have it anymore. Um, and, just, and and he couldn't recall either. So Kate, I don't know if you can, if you guys know where my old files are. Can I just back up a second, ask a clarifying question? Is this just part of the OSI plan to improve the existing fence? Or has there been any contact so, with the property? So, so the existing fence is coming down. Right. Um, they're taking it down. They're taking it down. For the yeah. It's on our it's on our property. There is no question it's on our property. If the existing fence is not safe, it needs to come down. OSI's plan is to replace it with the property owner somehow became aware of this because of the discussions that are going on. I don't think they saw the Zoom meeting when we first talked about the presentation. Came to me and said, you know, the town made an agreement for us for a privacy fence. So I started exploring it through the help of Kate's office. We found these resolutions in the minutes from 1999 and 2003. Um, that's all we can find at this moment. We haven't found any they reference agreements that we can't can't locate. So I'm kind of bringing this to your attention now to just say, this is what the neighbor is, is sort of looking to get. The, the question is whether we, we are responsible to, to uh, deliver on that or not, or if we just say this three rail post fence is what we're doing. And if you want to put something privacy on your property, you're welcome to. But and Mike, I'm even if, if that resolution said that they're to maintain it, I'm okay with saying if you want more than that, unless you can hand us an agreement that says otherwise, that you know, that's a responsibility if if yeah. to maintain it. And it's not maintained and it's dangerous now. Well, I I think, yeah, my thought is is that maybe we need a new agreement. And if we're if OSI needs to take that fence down and we well, want the fence is coming, and the, down. yeah, no question. But if they, if they need if it's coming down, I'm just saying that's part of this project. Um, I think it's a nice gesture to replace it with something. But it it at this iteration that would be on town property, and it would be the fence would be owned by the town, correct? So it mm -hmm. sounds like we just need a new agreement and then we can choose whatever fence we want. Well, the problem is they they want a privacy fence and OSI's. So I went to OSI and said, okay. can you can you estimate the cost of this? And so that's, this, what, this, this, okay. that's what this is with OSI coming back say it's $22,000. OSI is not going to build that fence unless we're going to pay for it. Uh, I'm not sure of the lay of the land but is it possible? I, I don't know how much would screen their home. Is it possible to put up a privacy fence for a portion that would screen their home, but we're not going to screen all of their property? They didn't seem, OSI seemed to think that this was the minimum distance it would need to be to actually do the job. So, yeah, their property line. Runs yeah. Yeah. But the, the purpose of this yeah. tonight was just yeah, to just make see, you guys I put it on your like, radar. Yeah. So, I mean, and we're going to continue to research and try to get answers. Um, back then, a lot of things were done on the handshake. Yeah. So, there's no document that says what the deal actually was. Yeah. Their attorney and I both think there was one, but neither of us have that record anymore. It's just too so, old. Um, it's 720. So, Mary Lou, I think. Everything else that we have to talk about, we don't need you for. So thank you very much. Okay. And uh, we'll see you in uh, in a few weeks. All right. Very good. Stay cool, both literally and figuratively. <laughs> and with that, then Night. we're going to jump to executive session. Uh, the town of Rochester motion is to enter into executive session at 7.20 p.m. Like I thought you were talking about email system. Oh We're going to have to do later because we have our interviews and set up funny stuff. Okay. I need to uh, For the purpose of interview with particular persons applying for appointment to the Agriculture Advisory Committee. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mark, if we don't, we'll probably talk about it at a later time. It wasn't an urgency for tonight, so thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kate. Okay, so I'm going to stop the stream. Stop the stream.